Joanna, would, would you step on it? I have to be at the studio in 15 minutes. I fixed the furnace and re-insulated the pipes. <laughs> it's always fun to see how many chores I can squeeze in while Joanna does her makeup. <laughs> it's all, always been a gas for me, too, George. Hey, Georgie, our mini muffinette had another milestone. She sucked my finger. <laughs> and, and before that, she, she spit up. <laughs> both, both momentous events. Boy, I'm never around when history is made. When Brooke Shields did her first Bob Hope Easter special, I was stuck in a donut shop waiting for the buttermilks to come out of the oven. Well, you, you missed a very funny Peter Cottontail sketch. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> Henry Tashman, one of Mummy and Daddy's jaded lawyers. Gentlemen, here. Henry's in charge of my clothing firm. <laughs> so, what brings you up from Rhode Island? Your parents wanted to give your precious baby a gift, so they bought a local property for her. Why? There's nothing worth buying around here. Dick found out the hard way. <laughs> yeah, a good, good stiff wind, and uh, we're under a mountain of matchsticks. <laughs> Is that true? Or is it a joke? It's a, it's a, it's a, a joke, and not, a, not, a, not a very good one. And why humiliate yourself needlessly? Dick has this pathetic need to be the center of attention. So, what worthless piece of property is Baby Steffi stuck with? Your. Baby is now the sole owner of the local TV station, WPID. WPID? I talked your parents out of buying her CBS. Oh, Steph, imagine our bubbler will be a baby mogul at six weeks. Michael, you also will have a position at the station. Jump and mother of Moses, you mean this hombre's back in the showbiz saddle? <laughs> oh, God, please, no. According to the terms of the gift, your official title will be that of figurehead. Figurehead? Did you hear that step? I'm a figurehead! Oh, Michael, it's what you've always dreamed of, a meaningless title with no responsibility. And, and you did it through hard work and, and perseverance. <laughs> Henry, since, since Michael is going to be an impotent uh, figurehead, who's going to make all the decisions? Why, my baby, of course. The center of a stinking universe. Oh, sweetie, you've made Mommy and Daddy so proud. <gasps> yes, you have. <laughs> oh, yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> would, uh, would one of you mind telling me how a, a baby who can't talk is, is going to run a TV station? Steph, give this doubt and loudness sample of how our cuddly one communicates. Is this expensive Scottish cashmere, yes or no? <laughs> See? <laughs> She's wiggling her feet. That means no. When she means yes, she, she does this. Cut it out, Michael. <laughs> okay, honey, we can go now. I'll do my final touch-up in the car. <laughs> hey, Jojo, guess what? My illustrious in-laws have gifted our golden child with WPIV. From now on, your show and Dix will be part of the... Baby Stephanie Broadcasting Network. <laughs> the baby's going to run the station? <laughs> that means yes. <laughs> hey, it's Mikey Harris. You guys remember him? Oh, sure you do. He's the obnoxious little guy who had a bright future here till it all came crashing down on his head. <laughs> on his head. That's a good one, Polly. <laughs> There's something you should know. Uh, Stephanie's parents bought uh, PIV and gave it to, to the baby. It's nuts, but uh, 
The, the kid is your boss. <laughs> You want it all at once, or every day for the rest of your life? <laughs> every day sounds good. Uh, Michael, introduce baby Stephanie to all her little workers. The International Brotherhood of Yokels. <laughs> These are your cameramen and sound men. And, oh, this is Paul. He was once a producer. <laughs> now, he's your diaper man. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Jojo has to go finish her makeup so she can look pretty for you on her show. Mm. <laughs> Boy, what a suck up. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, someone has to work around here. In five, four, three, two. And now it's Vermont Today starring Dick Loudon. Vermont Today is a Baby Stephanie Harris production brought to you by the generosity of the cutest baby in the whole wide world. Yes, she is. Oh, yes, she is. Well, well welcome, welcome to Vermont Today. I'm, I'm your host, Dick Love. The, the only word that describes my very special guest is, well, genius. Hello, Roland Myers. Father of modern lawn furniture. <laughs> Hi, Dick. Roland, I know the burning question on everyone's mind is, how, how did you get the idea for, for lawn furniture? Well, one August afternoon, many years ago, I was sitting on the grass sipping lemonade. I thought, if only I had something to sit on like a regular person. <laughs> An hour later, I built the first lawn chair. I've never seen the baby shake her feet so vigorously. Do you think our little darling has deduced that Dick is drab? Well, she was bound to find out sooner or later. I needed something to put the lemonade on, so that's why I invented the lawn table. Fascinating. Oh, damn, our, our time is up and we've only... <laughs> Only just scratch the surface. I'd, I'd like to thank my, my fascinating guest, Roland Myers. Uh, remember, folks, transcripts for today's show are available, but please, only one to a fan. <laughs> and we're out. Baby Stephanie wants to see you, Dick, and she's not happy. <laughs> no, she's not. Oh, no, she's not. <laughs> Dick, this is so hard. Uh, baby Steph's firing you. <laughs> She's what? You're what? <laughs> well, don't think it's easy for her, but she has to ask herself why throw good money after bad. <laughs> this, this is crazy. After that uh, amazing interview? Well, she just didn't respond to the material. and she, she was also dying for you to pick up the pace. The baby told you that? Well, not in so many words. Like none. <laughs> she was kicking her feet like crazy. And she had another way of showing how she felt. <laughs> you just couldn't pick up the pace, could you? I mean, I, I don't believe it. I, I've had a, a TV show here for, for seven years, and a, a, a kid wiggles her feet and, and poops, and, uh, and, and I'm out. <laughs> Couldn't you give Dickie another chance? Say, a week to change the direction of his show so you like it? She's mulling. But what if I don't want to change the direction of my show? Oh, oh. oh Dick, I wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> oh, Paul. <laughs> I'm uh, not afraid to take an unpopular position. I like you. That's why I'm giving you this. 
A list of guests guaranteed to appeal to baby Steph. <laughs> who's... Who's Helen Bodaglia? A wet nurse. You expect me to interview a, a woman who, whose breasts are for hire? Dick, trust me. Lean on me. Those marketable memories can be your meal ticket. Michael, you're a boob. <laughs> This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Uh, Larry, is this, uh, is this important? We're here to save Dick's show from dying on the vine. <laughs> my show is not dying. Of course, you're right, we're wrong. As long as he has a steak knife in his hand, we better humor him. <laughs> I think you've already got one foot off the ledge. If the boy's alleged to have a hedge, it'll give you an edge, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> A list of Daryl's personal friends who could save Dick Show from dying on the vine. <laughs> Billy Holiday. Uh, Billy Holiday is, is dead. That explains why she ain't had us over lately for Carrot Kate and Sing Along. <laughs> Wait, uh, here's someone who's still with us. Uh, George McGovern. Senator George McGovern? <laughs> How did, how did Daryl get to know George McGovern? Well, due to his extraordinary campaign strategies, Daryl was responsible for McGovern's landslide victory in the 72 presidential election. <laughs> uh, guys, um, McGovern, um, he sort of lost to Nixon that year. Oh? <laughs> well, I guess that explains why Daryl hasn't been invited to the White House for carrot cake and sing-alongs. <laughs> You, you could really get George McGovern on my show? Whoa, Dick, what have we been talking about? <laughs> the baby's not going to relate to a politico. Unless... Uh, this McGovern, does, uh, does he do funny faces? <laughs> uh, maybe you'd, you'd like it, it better if, uh, if he wore a silly hat. Or, or better yet, uh, dressed up as a pickle. <laughs> Dick, well, it'll take at least two weeks to get a good pickle costume, eh? <laughs> And thank you so much for the long stem red roses. I'll put them right on the new wet bar you had installed for me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wet, wet bar? I, I don't even I don't even have a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for booking this politician guy, Dick. Maybe Stephanie's gonna have me working overtime. By the way, Paulie, I left some wing tips by your locker. I stepped in something this morning. See what you can do. <laughs> in five, four, three, two. And now it's Vermont Today, starring Dick Loudon. Well, welcome, welcome to, to Vermont Today. I'm, I'm Dick Loudon, and it's a privilege to have as my special guest the former senator from South Dakota, George McGuff. Welcome, Senator. Thank you, Dick. <clears throat> you know, there's a there's a burning question I, I I've got to ask you. What what was it like to run for for president of, of the United States? Well, uh, it was a pretty interesting experience, but it was also a lot of hard work. Oh, I'll, I'll bet. <laughs> so, uh, so you're saying that that it was uh, it was interesting and uh, at at the same time hard uh, hard work. That uh, that pretty well sums it up. Her feet are going a mile a minute. If those two don't jazz things up, she's going to pull the plug. What's with that, Dick? I throw a wet nurse in his face, and he doesn't even bite. <laughs> Uh, Senator, <coughs> we have, we have to confab. Go away. Everything all right? Uh, yes, yes. This this man, he just he he wants to get your uh, your your autograph. He's a uh, he's a a, a liberal. <laughs> really? He uh, he looks like a shallow, self-centered, uh, materialistic yuppie to me. <laughs> Get off 
a stage. Dick, the red flags are flying. Now, if you don't pique my infant's interest soon, she'll have Buddy pull the plucky. <laughs> You know, I, I'm sure uh, a lot of our, our younger viewers uh, would like to know uh, about your childhood. Uh, when you were a kid, did you ever think about what it, what it would be like to run for, for president of, of the United States? I think I uh, thought it would be interesting. <laughs> uh, but uh, also a lot of hard work. <laughs> Oh, oh, my God. Uh, is, is something wrong, uh, Dick? I, uh, uh, c uh, c call me, call me Dicky Poo. <laughs> Dicky Poo? Or, or, uh, Dickadee, or, or Dickada, uh, uh, uh Dicky Wicky. D you know, just take, take your, your picky. Well, uh, Dicky Wicky. I, uh thought maybe we could uh, talk about the State of the Union under the present administration. All righty, Rooney. <laughs> uh, can, can we, uh, can, can we do it while, while we, while we, we do this? <laughs> why, why, why are you acting like this? Because it's fun! <laughs> you, uh, do you have some medical problems? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, uh, I'm naturally happy. Dicky wicky <laughs> Come on, Georgie, won't you rub your tummy? I'll be, I'll be your best friend. <laughs> you mean, you mean like this? <laughs> Sen Senator, uh, ple please stop. <laughs> but, uh, this is fun. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm terribly sorry. Look, uh, some people encourage me to, to go after the, the youth market, but <clears throat> I mean, if it means making a man of your of your stature look idiotic, I I just I just won't do it. Now let's let's get back to our our political discussion. How uh, how did your wife feel when you decided to run for for uh, president? Well, I uh, I think she found it interesting, <laughs> but uh, also a lot of hard work. <laughs> Well, I, I see we've run out of time. <laughs> this, is a, this is Dick Loudon thanking my guest, Senator George McGovern, and saying goodbye forever. <laughs> stuff that happened to you today. The news reporter said you'll probably be replaced by widow Nikki Lerner. Well, we're all going to miss Dick's show terribly. But there is some good news. The baby gave me a company car. Just for kissing up? It's a mockery. Where's the car? Where's the car? Outside. Want to go for a spin? Oh, boy, do I? It's a mockery. <laughs> Wicky. It's, it's Dick. I had it legally changed back. Uh, we held a behind closed doors session with baby Steffi, and well, she's wavering. I don't care. She's not my boss anymore. Well, fine, if you don't mind losing your TV show. Michael, come on, let's go warm up the baby's bottle. We'll, uh, we'll be right back. Keep, uh, keep a peeper on our pitcher. <laughs> I, I think what you're doing is unfair. <laughs> oh, 
Well, all right, all right, maybe you... Maybe, maybe you do know what you like, but... I mean, I, I'm aiming for an audience who can, uh, you know, walk and, and talk. <laughs> well, sure, sure, you know, you can go on about your, your, your demographics and your, your TVQ. <laughs> but, I mean, there, there's room for, for shows with substance. <laughs> so you agree? Y you know, I mean, you know, there, uh, there are enough dumb programs on the air. Like Joanna's. <laughs> Look, I, I... I think if you watched Vermont Today regularly, you, you, you might grow to, to like it. Look, I, I don't, I don't want to take any more of your time. <laughs> can, I, can I have my, my show or not? Oh, thanks, boss. <laughs> You're okay. Guess you are. Guess you are. <laughs> How's your cold doing, George? What cold? <laughs> uh, never mind. Uh, Stephanie, if you lowered your arm, something might actually get clean. <laughs> it would also cause dust to fly, which is unhealthy for my baby. You really don't think things through, do you, Joanna? <laughs> hail, hail, Apple, an apple out of my eye. Dick, Jojo, loud up. This cook has concocted a tasty new way to serve up your TV shows. I'm salivating in anticipation. <laughs> I'm flip-flopping your time slots. From now on, ye will be on before ye, you see? Is that a plan or what? See, the, the thing about a plan is usually, you know, it has like a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> really, huh? All you people ever talk about is television. Everyone in my world is obsessed with TV. I'm not. Well, you're also not part of my world, George. <laughs> Oh, okay, you're on the fringe. Surf suppers, cuppers, I just had a tidal wave of an idea. Oh, let me take a wild guess. You're flip-flopping our time slots again? Possibly, possibly. But right now my notion's to give my Huff and Muffin a show of her own. My own TV show? Where I'll be the center of attention and people will write me fan mail I'll never answer? <laughs> Oh, use, uh, use a form letter. You know, it, it's just as impersonal. <laughs> True. Michael, I don't know if I can do a show like Dick's or Joanna's. Actually, it's not as hard as it looks. No, I mean I want to do something good. <laughs> something that would affect people, that would change the world. How about a, a sitcom? Yes! <laughs> now, with me writing, producing, and directing this thing, how could it fail? Easy with you writing, producing, and directing this thing. <laughs> Michael, have you ever done a sitcom before? Nay, Joanna, I have not. But I have seen every episode of every sitcom ever created, except for that Brady Bunch where Mr. Brady buys the kids a pool table. So, um... <clears throat> 
Who else is uh, going to be in this sitcom of yours? No one, just me. That's all. <laughs> Nobody else. Yeah, Joe. Now the other characters would just uh, get in the way. I'm made an aficionado of the form. I must point out that every successful sitcom needs a good stooge. That's true. You need a goofball, a doofus, someone so thick he always misses the point. Is that right? Is that even what we're talking about? Well, I could play a doofus. I'm not afraid to look silly. As you're demonstrating right now. Excuse my sexism, Broadway Jojo, but the best stooges are, are men. The paragon being the incomparable Don Knotts. Hey, what about Dick for the stooge? Doesn't WPIV have you on one of those deals where you have to do everything they say? I, I don't, I don't know, know what you're talking about. See, he's a natural. <laughs> yes! Th uh, thanks, George. Uh, by, by the way, you're no longer part of my world. <laughs> Who needs your world? I'm on Stephanie's fringe. <laughs> you know, I also have an overall deal at the station. Maybe I could play Stephanie's best friend. Excuse us. No. no. <laughs> a best friend is someone you'd borrow clothes from. I mean, come on. Shazam, we'll throw Joanna a bone. She'll play my dog. <laughs> an even better part, an even smaller part. Congratulations, Joanna. You are now a part of my sitcom family. Oh. Of course, you might have to memorize a line. I can do it. I can do it, Dick. I might have a line. Oh, that's, that's nice, honey. Let, you know, let's hope it's a funny one. Yeah. <laughs> so, writer, producer, director, when can we shoot my sitcom? Well, let's see. I still have to come up with a premise, write the script, have sets built, hire a crew. What, two days? <laughs> Quality takes time. <laughs> It's Jody, no, it's Jody. We're seeing double. Teenage twins are double duty. We're seeing double. Since their mom drowned in a lake, Dad has taught his girls to bake. Ever eat baloney cake? It's really grody. Oh, Jude and Jody, what mischief you twins get into? I wonder which of my 15-year-old identical twin daughters, Judy or Jody, did this to me. Their father, Henry Bumter. Hi, Daddy. All right, which one of you twins cut a hole in my paper? Uh-oh. Jody, I thought so. I knew it couldn't have been Judy. She's my little bookworm. Jody's my little troublemaker. Come on, Daddy. I don't cause that much trouble. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, Daddy, I cut up your paper. And I'm sorry. Especially since today's your 35th birthday. And also, the anniversary of our mommy's death in that freak fishing accident. <laughs> Cheer up, twins. Remember, your mother's in a better place now. You mean the bottom of Lake Titicaca? <laughs> no, on the shores of Lake Heaven. <laughs> where no one ever gets tangled in fishing line. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> You're the swellest. Well, Judy, we'd better get back into that kitchen and start dinner before Daddy finds out I used his brand new pipe to blow soap bubbles. <laughs> Look who's here! It's your man crazy next door neighbor, Samini! Hey, Smitty, seen any hunks lately? Yeah, the mailman. <laughs> what 
a hunk. Uh, I'd like to give him a special delivery. <laughs> Smitty, I have a problem. Sounds serious, Hank. What is it? Irregularity. <laughs> Also, the twins. Jody's a prankster and Judy's a bookworm. I'm sure I wouldn't have these problems if their mother, Harriet, were still alive. Gosh, I miss her so. What you need is a chick, a mother hen for the girls, and someone finger licking good for you. <laughs> Come on, Smitty. What, what woman would give these graying temples a second look? Hey, just do what my hunk boyfriends do. Dye your hair jet black. All right, I'll do it. Tonight I'm going to die. <laughs> my hair. Oh, Judy, I just heard the most terrible thing. Our daddy's going to die tonight. C and Double will be back on the double. <laughs> and now, back to C and Double. <laughs> oh, I know that look. You're thinking maybe I didn't hear Daddy right. <laughs> well, maybe I've done that before. Like the time I thought David Letterman was coming. Because I overheard Daddy tell Smitty, guess who's coming to visit? David. I know if I hadn't jumped to conclusions and had waited for Daddy to finish his sentence, I would have learned it wasn't David Letterman coming, but David Smith, an old family friend. But this time's different. You gotta believe me. You just gotta. Oh, you do believe me. You do. So, what now, sis? We can't just ignore this thing and hope it'll disappear like Jimmy Hoffa, Amelia Earhart, Judge Crater, and the comedy team of Wayne and Schuster. <laughs> oh, you think we should pray? Good idea. Now, where's that damn, I mean, darn, prayer book? In the pantry, of course. You always know where everything is. You're so organized, not bubble-headed like me. <laughs> Is this it, Judy? No, Jody, that's Daddy's bottle of scotch. Oh, here's the book, Jody. Hey, this isn't the prayer book. It's my diary, and someone's been reading it. Jody bumped her. Okay, you're forgiven. Now let's pray to God. Dear God, you took our mommy. Please don't take our daddy, too. Also, could you lend a helping hand to all our brothers and sisters in communist countries? Thank you. Amen. We should do something special for daddy tonight. After all, it is his birthday and he's dying. What's his favorite thing in the whole wide world? No, Jody, it used to be fishing. Now it's eating cream pie. And we're going to make him the best one ever. And could you try to be a little less messy this time? <laughs> okay, maybe I didn't think when I put the firecracker in the mix master. Twin daughters, it's me, Henry Bumpter, your father. Daddy's home. Uh-oh. I hope I didn't goof up the recipe. <laughs> and put detergent instead of flour in that pie. Boy, I'd love to give that hug Hogan the old Smitty slam. <laughs> hey, no hair dye. Smittyism number six. You want chicks, you can't chicken out. <laughs> I don't need any hair dye anymore. At the drugstore, I met the most beautiful pharmacist. You think Morris Fishbine is beautiful? Well, I'll be a jive turkey. 
I'm not talking about Morris. I'm talking about his daughter. Her name is Harriet, just like my late wife, Harriet. Well, did you ask this Harriet out for a little ha-cha-cha? <laughs> Didn't have to. She asked me out. Where are you taking this chickaroonie? To, uh, to a costume ball. I'm going as the 35-year-old father of 15-year-old twin girls. <laughs> Either that or as a giant rutabaga. And Harriet, the pharmacist? She'll be going as the Grim Reaper. She'll be here at 7 to pick me up. So what you're saying is the Grim Reaper is coming for you at 7 o'clock. <laughs> Or to put it another way, I'm going to see Harriet tonight. Well, I guess I'll go over to the gym and pump iron. Iron's the name of the stud who runs the juice bar. <laughs> Twin daughters, I'm going to my room now. Believe what you just told me that the Grim Reaper is coming for Daddy at seven o'clock. Uh oh, the Grim Reaper is early. Maybe if we're quiet, he'll think no one's home and go away. How ironic. Jody knocked over the urn that contains Mother's ashes. Oh, great. Now the Grim Reaper knows we're here. Oh, you have a scheme? Okay, you go in the kitchen and get the you-know-what. I'll stall the Grim Reaper. <laughs> is that you, Grim Reaper? Why, yes, it is. Uh, we already gave at the lake. <laughs> Jody, are you ready yet? Okay, on three. One, two. Why, hi, I'm... We know who you are. Three, here's pie in your eye. <laughs> Why, I never... Hmm, detergent. <laughs> Looks like the Grim Reaper got his just desserts. <laughs> Jody, Judy, why did you just throw a detergent pie in Harriet's face? Harriet? You know the Grim Reaper by name, and it's a woman? Man, oh man. <laughs> that Grim Reaper was my date. We were going to a costume ball. What must have happened was you misinterpreted what you heard earlier I was dying when actually I was just going to dye my hair so I could meet a nice woman oh daddy we're sorry we jumped to conclusions we were afraid of losing you like we lost mommy oh my twins <laughs> you'll never lose me sure I may have a few gray hairs which get even grayer the more you two pull your teenage shenanigans but heck I'm only 35 I'm going to be your father for years to come oh my twins I love you so oh daddy we love you so too look who's here man crazy smitty with big news me and iron are getting hitched come on in you stud you hi everybody <laughs> It's like I'm seeing double. Hey, check out these ratings, Dixa Apso. Through the shingles. 
Those couch potatoes were glued to their tubers. <laughs> Those couch potatoes have IQs of spuds. <laughs> there they are. There's the cast of Seeing Double. Not me. I'm just a Seeing Double groupie. The Seeing Double production office said I'd find you here. You played the irrepressible Jody. <laughs> And you were Henry, the mean-spirited father. <laughs> and you were the Grim Reaper. <gasps> That's right. You recognized me. <laughs> hey, where's that Judy the bookworm? Oh, she's in the kitchen cleaning up another one of Jody's messes. <laughs> right. Actually, my extraordinary talents allowed me to play both parts. Nobody is that good. Well, maybe nobody you know. <laughs> and you. You're Michael Harris. Tell me. Has anyone ever used the word genius to describe you? I have. <laughs> well, listen, my name is Brendan Dubler, and I'm here Network from Network VP, Brendan Dubler? <laughs> <laughs> then you're the genius. Oh, no, no, you are. Oh, I can't take credit oh, no, for no, anything. Oh, no, you are. Really? Boys, I'm boys, boys, hard. boys. By TV standards, you're both geniuses. <laughs> Good point, Bumter. Anyway. When I get back to the coast, I want to order 13 episodes of Seeing Double for the fall season. Did I you think we're on our way, guys. This is great. Oh, of course, we'll have to dump the bumpster. Too mean spirited for prime time. <laughs> Drat. <laughs> we can kill him off in another freak fishing accident and have Smitty and her iron chap raise the twins. Genius. Genius. Well, no, man. you are. No, you are the true genius. No, really. You are the true genius. Must be the president of the United States. Probably wants to put Judy and Jody on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Hello? So, what do you think my chances are for an Emmy? Oh, the buzz around Tinseltown is you're a shoe-in. <laughs> I thought so. I just wanted to reconfirm the obvious. <laughs> that uh, was your, your network. There was a shake-up back there. Your secretary staged a coup. And <laughs> you're out. <laughs> Damn, and I was only there a week. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What about seeing double? After I down a few stiff light beers, I'll be seeing triple. Ciao. Well, there goes my dream of a Grim Reaper Christmas special. Paul's not grim, Grim. So we're not going network. Well, by gum, we'll just stay here and be the best local sitcom the state of Vermont's ever seen. No, Michael? I think I should put my show on hiatus for a while. This TV business is too unstable for a beautiful young mother like me. But rest assured, those dazzling twin jewels, Judy and Jody, will live on in our hearts forever. It's all right, Joanna. You'll always be the Grim Reaper in my life. Oh, <laughs> I'd rather die. <laughs> My hair! Now, stay tuned as Barry Livingston guest stars on The Dick Van Dyke Show. Next on Nick at Night. <laughs>